Hey guys, Adrian here for the Digital Dojos at digitaldojos.com and today I have a video overview of an application that was, uh, I want to say first off thank you to Literature and Latte for sponsoring this video, it's actually we sponsored by them, they gave me the opportunity to uh, show you guys an application that I, I found out about from a, a podcast um, and then I, I downloaded the trial on my MacBook when I was out and about and it is a awesome, awesome uh, I don't even know. I, I like to call it a writing studio because if you're an outliner, you know, if you need to outline, if you need to edit, if you need a storyboard, or you need to simply write, um, Scrivener is a really, really awesome application. It kind of replaces your word processor and the fact it does everything your word processor will do and more. And it, it does it in a way that if you have a lot of content to write and a lot of stuff kind of mash up for like a book or something, it can easily divvy up or divide your content into small little snippets. Uh, and that's what's really, really good at organizing your content and making it easy to use. And what's so great about Scrivener is there's not just one use for it. There's so many uses. I've only barely scratched the surface. And in this video, I'll probably only scratch, you know, the basic outlines and overview of the application. So in this uh, video, I just want to overview it and give my little thoughts on it on Scrivener for the Mac. It's also available recently for Windows. So now it's available for Windows. So do check it out. It's available for both Windows and Mac users. So, uh, you know, twice the fun for everybody to check out. All right, so uh, you can download the trial or you can buy it for $45 USD once if you want the full version. And I guarantee you once you see everything, if you are looking for a, a writing tool or some sort of process or word processor and you don't know what you want to get, or if you're looking for a script writing tool, something to write your book in, your ebook in, definitely I think uh, you, you'll find Scrivener will get the job done and all that much more. So do stay tuned through till the end of the video. I'm hoping I can find the coupon code or if we can get a coupon code for a discount. Uh, it's still in the works right now. So if anything, I'll leave an annotation or if there's anything that can save you a couple dollars off the uh, final price here. So today we're going to be looking at the Mac version for it. And I'm going to say, like I said, I'm not going to cover everything, so I'm going to leave you this link right here, which has the full Scrivener tutorial videos where they go over tons of other stuff, tons of cool stuff that you can check out. I want to highlight two stuff that I'm going to talk a little bit about later in the end here uh, out of this list. But um, first off, uh, let's go ahead and go into the general overview of Scrivener. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, so here we are at the overview. As soon as you open... Scrivener, and this is what you see your project templates, uh, and everything is based off of the blank template here. You can get, use the Getting Started tab if you want to look at the tutorials, etc., or the manual. The blank tab is just obviously a blank document you can use to start your Scrivener project. Uh, they have a couple other stuff here because I'm going to talk a little bit about uses and who exactly uses Scrivener in a bit um, and give you examples of uses you can do with it. But uh, who's Scrivener for? It's for so many people, it's for novelists, it's for writers, it's for screenplay. You know, if you write screenplays, if you want to do graphic design work, you need somewhere to cut anywhere. You, if you need a place to compile your work, I use it a lot for financial stuff and business related stuff with digital dojos. Uh, I kind of put all of our project files in there related to blog posts, research. Uh, that's what I, I mainly use Scrivener for on my MacBook, which is the main machine I first downloaded Scrivener on. I'm going to show you a couple other uses and example uh, projects in Scrivener in a second here. Uh, so you can use fiction templates. There's non-fiction templates. Uh, there's really, really cool templates here that they have pre-planned out for you. Script writing templates. Uh, if you want to, you know, do writing a song or a screenplay, poetry, and so much more. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with a blank one just to show you an example of the interface here. And I'm going to say test, and I'm going to replace the document I already have here. And here is Scrivener. I'm going to go ahead and resize it here. And with this, I just want to talk about the interface, an overview of the interface very simply tapping into the buttons. And what's so great about Scrivener is the interface is completely customizable. You can add stuff, move stuff around. Uh, so you can go into these file menus up here, of course, Scrivener, file, because uh, almost everything you can do the interface, you can do from the file menus. Uh, edit, and of course, view, like I said, you can kind of edit the layout from here and the interface and how you want to look at it. Uh, these are all of your kind of essential buttons up there as well. So if you want to check that out, uh, feel free to. But I'm just going to talk about mainly these buttons, which you'll mainly see here. So here, first off, is your binder. You can show and close your binder, which is this main tab on your left. And this pane right here, this binder pane, is essentially everything that is held within your content, your project file, whatever you're starting. If you're writing a book, if you're writing an essay, everything within documents, sub-documents, research papers, everything is going to go in your binder, much like it would be in a real binder. Everything just goes in it, and this is how you can access it by clicking that button. Collection, if you have a collection of stuff here, uh, this will just deal with, you know, multiple binders and stuff like that, or different, you can rename it, uh, different stuff here. You can have all these uh, sort of tabs, so this is what they call them, tabs, 
those are your collections. Um, here you can show layouts, and what's really cool about layouts, I have this uh, on the on my trial version on the MacBook. Um, it allows you to save current window uh, setups and interface uh, tweaks that you've made, so you can quickly switch between different workplaces. And which is really cool on my MacBook, I have one for if I'm doing like a uh, blog post writing, if I really just want to really simple down plain text editor, I'm not gonna use a lot of tools. Uh, I, I have a simplified default uh, Scrivener layout, but if I'm going to be doing more complex stuff like financials and website related stuff when I want to do my digital dojo's overview, I have a little bit more buttons, I have a little bit more interface tweaks uh, and mods and stuff like that. Uh, there's something called uh, a math thing from Desky, which I'm going to show you a math type thing I'll show you later on. So that's really cool if you want if you have different uses for Scrivener, you can save different layouts. This adds your doc document or sub document. Um, you can delete here, of course, delete your documents in the sub binder here. Uh, this allows you to go into full screen mode, and they have so much customization for uh, composition mode or full screen mode. You can add backgrounds, you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff, and that's really awesome if you just want to get drilled down and focus on your writing. You have keyword panel, which you can add keywords and show or hide those. The quick reference panel for quick reference to your document, whatever one you're currently on in your binder. You can add little post notes or little uh, selected text or comments. This goes in hand in hand with the inspector, which I'll get to in a second here. This just allows you to toggle pane, uh, page layout, uh, compile for export or print, which I will quickly show you here. Um, and this is just something that is awesome because when you export or compile, there's a difference when you're compiling. You can compile and you can format it as a you know original file, an ebook. This allows you to do ebooks. This allows you to do iBook author chapters, proof copies, scripts, or screenplays. So you can already see just so many uses within Scrivener, which you can export this over. You can use it for a whole bunch of different purposes, like I was saying. You have your three pane views right here, which are your single document view uh, and your uh, cork board and your outliner. I'm going to quickly go into those in a second here. I'm going to show you the examples. Your synopsis finder, which is coinciding with your inspector. Your inspector here opens up your thing for your synopsis, for your document notes. Uh, and your general tab. So basically, this allows you to add side notes or footer notes over to your uh, document. So let's say you're writing a book. You can write a little bit, let's say this is chapter one, for example. You can add, you know, uh, let's say Adrian goes and starts a website. You know, you can add a little bit of a uh, description for your chapters if you're writing a book and you add document notes. Uh, let's say I need to, need to uh, find pictures associated, you know, whatever, uh, with a chapter for example. All right, so um, you know that you, there'd be a couple of document notes there, and then you have these little buttons right here to go through references. So if you have references, this is really awesome. I do this for blog posts. You can add URLs or stuff like that if you have sources or anything like that. You can add keywords if you want to make it easier to find. You can add metadata. Uh, there is snapshots, which is a cool little feature too. Uh, and of course, comments and footnotes. Again, that's uh, something if you're like, doing any books or anything you want to add in. Very, very cool stuff. So with that, guys, that is the general basic interface of Scrivener. And of course, you have your standard text writing tools uh, and all that. We're going to go ahead and now look at the example documents and a little bit more of cool uses for Scrivener. All right, so here we are looking at an APA paper template format that they have as a, this is a, a uh, example Scrivener project file. So you can just see here how you can adjust to what you're, uh, you know, what's, what's going to be showing in your binder here. So I quickly want to show you some stuff here. So first off, you can have sub documents, like I mentioned earlier. Now, let's say, for example, in this case, you have what's called the paper. Your paper is going to construct of your title page, your abstract, title, and introduction. For this case, it's an APA format paper. So when I create a new document, so let's say I create this paper, and I'll say, you know, maybe uh, in the beginning of my paper, I also need like a, a sources page in the beginning. So let's say you have this blank document here, and it's not going to turn into a document until I start adding text. So you can see now there's text on it here. Now let's say you want to add it into your paper category. To make it a sub document, you just simply drag it over, and it will become a sub document. If you want it to be a document on its own, you can just simply drag it out. It really is that simple. And of course, you can collapse these sub documents as needed. Um, you can also see here there's a couple other you know examples here. Uh, and these are just random text here. And as you highlight on a sub document folder or document folder that has a group of documents, you go into the corkboard view that we were talking about earlier. This corkboard view is really cool because it kind of lays out stuff. Everything for you to see, you can add little notes to it if I click on here. So obviously this is the main content. You know, we can add little notes like this like we would have on a real corkboard. If you have pictures or stuff like that, it also gets sorted in here. So a corkboard is a really cool overview of everything. But to get more detailed look at stuff, you can go into the outliner mode, which is really, really tight. 
and uh, it has these ton, you know tons of information. Uh, this is one of my favorite views because I, I do a lot of uh, uh, one of my other on my MacBook on the trial version of Scrivener that I have. There's tons and tons of stuff in one of my binders, and this is really my favorite view kind of view stuff because again, it just gives you that uh short but sweet outline of everything and you know tightly packed information is what i meant to say earlier because it, it gives you kind of you know that title synopsis it gives you the labels if you have any you can add statuses which allow you to do stuff like if this is a first draft if this is a to-do list a revised draft etc etc um you also have your research side here so you have research information and i oh i quickly want to mention the last mode which is called scrivener mode which allows you to so for example if i click on this and i click on scrivener mode you get everything that is grouped up all in one. You get a, a huge overview of everything within that uh, documents and sub documents. And the lines actually show you, they subdivide where a new document begins. So, for example, this is the title uh, page of the sub document. This is title sub document. But Scrivener mode gives you that full overview and shows you where all the breaks occur. Uh, really, really nice uh, to kind of overview everything. Like I said, also along with corkboard, which gives you a more condensed version of that. Research. Research is obviously just where your research uh, documents are going to be. This helps me a lot for blog posts. Again, if I have sites or references, uh, I put everything in the research uh, section. What's really cool here, you can see research as an example paper here. We have an example paper. You can import files to show, you know, doc, doc files, etc. to show as, you know, research papers if you need that uh, to reference to. Uh, you can add full on websites. This is the Literature and Latte website. So I can click here and this would open up in my default, uh, default Chrome browser or Safari browser. So you can have, you know, full on websites embedded. You can have uh, different stuff like this it looks like what, a newspaper type article or an infographic type thing. If you have infographics or pictures or PDFs, this is, I guess this is a PDF file. But if you have PDFs, if you have pictures, infographics, whatever they may be, you can put that all in your research thing so you're not constantly switching between browser and, you know, and Scrivener or, you know, uh, Scrivener and some random other application like Adobe, you know, the PDF viewer, Adobe Reader. Everything can just be viewed and simply switch back between within Scrivener, which is really, really awesome. You can, of course, add other things like notes, ideas, uh, additionally on your binder pane. Here, again, is just another example of an EPUB uh, and Kindle demo version of a Scrivener document here. In this case, they use what's implemented, which is called another feature called split view. You can actually split the view you have of your document so that you can view, you know, one on top of the other. Uh, you can view it horizontally, vertically. You can change the way, you know, the interface is really, again, customizable to how you want to view it. Um, and like I said, you can split this vertically, horizontally, whatever you really want to do. Uh, again, just another use of Scrivener that is really, really awesome. Again, if you want to cross-reference something, if you want to be reading something while you're writing something, it's just really, and the possibilities are endless here. And you can just see here, you have folders. You can implement folders in here, uh, in your side here, and you can be viewing that. Yeah, it's just it, the again. It, I can talk so much about the possibilities of Scrivener, but uh, th this is just again two uses. Whether it's an EPUB or a Kindle demo or a APA format paper of Scrivener, there's so many different uses and so many different ways to implement uh, Scrivener into your workflow. Alrighty, so to kind of pull it all together, uh, again, check out literatureandlatte.com. Head over to their video section if you do decide to check out the trial and just see the full capabilities of Scrivener. I mentioned a lot of stuff, but I'm really, again, only scratching the surface. The full screen mode, the composition mode, uh, the inspector footnotes, it talks all about those in depth. Uh, one of the cool things I have, again, on my MacBook is MathType. MathType is a thing by Desky, which allows you to use... Um, formulas and equations within Scrivener's editor. So it has support for Scrivener's editor. Uh, so if you use math type, you can implement that within Scrivener on the Mac. I believe it's only limited to the Mac. I'm not sure if that's available in Windows. But this allows you to do complex mathematical formulas. Really, really cool if you're doing any financial work or anything like that through Scrivener. I talked about the compiler earlier. The compiler allows you to, you know, whether it is ready for use for a web page for an ebook reader or a word processor, you can you know throw it back into a word processor after compiling it in Scrivener. Again, uh, it, its export options are so powerful and so strong, and it will definitely you know you'll definitely find a use for Scrivener if you think it's just a simple you know what would you do with a text editor. And just to sum it up, I mean that's what's so great about uh, Scrivener. 
it has so many features from a it can be a simple what you see what you get text editor you can go into full screen mode and you can just you know charge out thousands of words you can write up a blog post format it and then upload it to your site whatever you want to do you can you know write documents and documents in here just to keep kind of you know as a safe hold if you want to use this as a just a regular word processor if you're writing you know school documents etc it has support for syncing to stuff like dropbox so it has that compatibility has the compatibility to back up your files uh it, it can write full-on books you can use it to organize your book from start to finish people have literally you know there's tons of authors and novelists who wrote their full book within scrivener you can write ebooks on scrivener you can use dictation software with the scrivener scrivener's possibilities are so endless and that's what i love about it overall in my weeks of testing and my weeks of using it, what i realized it is a c application that works around you you don't work around it it adapts to your changes it adapts to your workflow and it can literally do almost anything related to writing uh, content and you can implement so much in it it's a really powerful powerful tool and for only forty five dollars you literally get a a powerhouse of an application it's now available for windows and os 10 so again there's no excuse if you're on os 10 or if you're on windows you can grab it on either os do check it out guys you can read the testimonials you can watch the video tutorials if this isn't enough for you and i'm sure you, you want to get tons and tons of more content on the features etc check it out guys thanks again a huge thanks to the guys at literature and latte i'm adrian from digitaldojos.com i'm going to leave a link to the full write-up and overview of scrivener 2.0 over at digitaldojos.com i'm going to do a little bit more in depth on the writing and screenshots and implementations of the way I use it in my own personal workflow. So if you're interested to see how I implement it and how I use it, my binders, etc., head over to digitaldojos.com to the attached post that will be uh, associated with this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Like it, and don't forget to head over to literaturelatte.com and purchase Scrivener. Thanks for watching.